Hello, I'm now going to explain to you how to use the pulse generator and how we can use it to demonstrate the performance of the Clipper Test Pro. Firstly, the pulse generator is battery operated with no external power supply required. Access to the four AA batteries is via the cover on the back. Thanks to the auto power off, battery life should be greater than one year. To activate the unit, the on off button on the front panel must be held for two seconds. This prevents accidental activation. The mode light comes on to show the unit is on and holding the on off button again switches the unit off. The trigger button will then start the pulse sequence once the unit has been switched on. The output LED will light when the pulse sequence starts. On the front panel below the SMA connectors um, output 1 or output 2 are the VDS voltage across the MOSFET. The third output is the current sense which indicates the drain current scaled at 100 millivolts per amp. Using the HVPG I am now going to perform four tests to demonstrate the advantages of the Clipper probe. Test 1 will use a standard high voltage oscilloscope probe. I will show you how difficult it is to see a VDS of between 0 and 2 volts while switching a MOSFET 1000 volts. Test 2 will show the advantage of blocking all voltages above 2 or 12 volts by allowing the VDS to be viewed in high resolution without offsets or oscilloscope quantization noise. Test 3 will use the pulse generator current sense output to display the drain current in parallel with the high resolution VDS from the clipper. Test 4 will then use the measured current and VDS from the clipper together with the oscilloscope math function to display the MOSFET on resistance RDS on. We will compare the MOSFET datasheet and look at the stability of RDS on with increasing drain currents. The first thing I'm going to do here is attach the high voltage scope probe here in channel 1 on the oscilloscope and output one on the pulse generator which is here. You can then switch the unit on. Okay. That to the side. So on, on the test box here. That's what I have on the screen. I see my one, two, three, four pulses. Ready? Zoom in. The cursors back to here. So in this case, I have an initial pulse around one hundred and seventy nanoseconds, um, and I have a uh, I have a fall time of 18 nanoseconds from the VDS. So what can I see? So I want to look closely at what's happening here. I can change the scale now, change the resolution. And you can see I've got an incorrect resolution on this scale. I can't see anything. All right. Let me see. I really have no chance to get any sense out of this here. Okay, so what I can do, I come back down. 10 volts per division. Um, and we can try again now, see what we can get on the screen. So in this case, we see this is the VDS on, but it's still, when we try and increase the resolution, we're still having trouble to actually see what's happening here. There's also an, an offset coming in here. That offset at the beginning is not correct. The current should be zero, there's the zero marker, and the current should be zero at the beginning. So we're seeing a voltage here of, could be two volts, 
VDS on, so uh, you know I can't see how that could. Here we are now, one volt per division. We've got now voltage here, one two two to two and a half volts initially across across the drain source. So what we've done now, we've connected the clipper here to output two. Output one is still the high voltage connection to the oscilloscope. Clipper then is connected to channel two here. So I'll put that down ready. And move to the oscilloscope. You can see now I've set channel two. Channel one is back to 200 volts per division. Channel two, two volts per division. Um, we're ready to go. If I push the button now to trigger, you can already see a dramatic change. First of all, the main point of seeing is that channel two is now the clipper output. You can see the VDS um, on across the transistor as the current increases. Um, the good thing is that we can now change by setting the changing on the high range. If I change the clipper to the, to the low range here, switch that one over. And now see that the clipping now occurs here at approximately one, two and a half volts. Okay. So I can increase again this resolution here now to 500 millivolts to vision. And we can do another trace. Okay. So I can see now very clearly what is happening at this point here. Um, if I start to expand the screen, you can see the difference. Here, 500 millivolts per division. I can now actually see that. I can change the resolution again. You see? So I can have an absolutely fantastic resolution on the drain source and always zero at this point. So you notice there's no offset now generated. So I move this into the middle of the screen and we can... Absolutely, we know that there's zero current because we've only just switched the transistor on and that's exactly what this is showing. This is the zero reference point. So what have I done now? <clears throat> what I've done is I've attached on the current sense output here, yeah, attached the scope probe down here. And now I can see this green trace here is the current. It's the actual current as 100 millivolts per division. So 200 millivolts here per division. So this becomes 2 amps. So if I now zoom in a little bit on the current scale, channel 4. I can then rerun it. There we go. So 200 millivolts. The blue one is the clipper VDS and the green is the current. So, so the next thing we're going to do is attach the, um, on the current sense output, we put on a 10 times probe and put that then into the oscilloscope on channel 3. Okay, as described, and we're going to have a maths channel set up to show um, resistance. And then we're going to. Okay, so what we got here, channel one shows us the high voltage, 200 volts per division. Um, channel three is the current um, with the zero scale here. So this is one amp per division. So this is half, there's our half amp, one amp. Um, and three amps come here. Um, and what we've added now, we've got the VDS, we've all added the maths channel. The maths channel is basically the resistance. It's a 10 times, which hasn't been included, so it's two ohms per division here, with the zero mark on here. Um, so if I try and zoom out, and see what's happening. So 
So in this area here, okay, we're down in the single millivolt VDSR, so we can ignore this. This is dividing the, the voltage by the current at such low um, currents and voltages is, 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 is in the noise area of the scope, okay? So we can first start looking at it when we've got around about, um, here we've got one volt per division, so we've got half a volt VDS, um, half a volt, 500 millivolts here, and we've got a respective current um, of, this is the zero current, position here, and this is on a scale of 100, um, it's basically 1 amp per division here, this is 1 amp, so we're looking here at about uh, a quarter of a, let me say, uh, 250 millivolts, quarter of an amp, okay, so the resulting factor here, 2, we've got 2 amps per division here, so we're on 1 ohm. So we can see that using the clipper, we have a very good null reference. There's no offsets from the signals at these at these at any at any voltage, but it's particularly important when we're looking at the zero volt. We can prove here at the zero volt mark that the current is zero, the VDS is zero, and the resistance, apart from the noise area here, the resistance is very constant all the way along at one ohm, which is exactly what's in the data sheet. Now, if I move along here a little bit. So we're going to now move to the, the first off switch period. Now this is very important. I'll move this back to the center so we can see what's happening. So what's happening here is the inductor has been charged up gradually to um, half an amp, as discussed before. The transistor then is switched off for a period of around um, 200 nanoseconds here. Um, it's switched back on with a speed of around 20 nanoseconds. So this is um, 1,000 volts in 20 nanoseconds. Now what has happened on the output of the transistor? Well basically, um, the first 100 nanoseconds after switching, we need to leave the, let the clipper settle down. There's a switching transient here. Um, but after that we see first of all that within, within one slight overshoot here, the RDS on of the MOSFET is, is exactly the same here. It continues across after between before the switch and after the switch. Same with the current, same with the voltage of course. Okay, so we have a good feeling at this point that things are going well. Um, the current is gradually increasing as we discussed before in the second charging period. So this is the second 40 seconds. Uh, 20 seconds raises the second 20 seconds where we expect to reach one amp and the RDS on is the same. Move, move everything over to the left and the same thing happens at the end of the second charging period here. We can zoom in. We have the same situation. We have the RDS on before and after is still one, one ohm. So no change. Transistor is working as it should do. We can zoom in now, zoom out, and I'll move the trace along. We can see now the second charging bit we're, we're allowing now, um, we've got about 20, 90 nanoseconds now, we're allowing the MOS, the inductor to be charged into saturation. Um, so the, the constant DI DT, which we saw here, that's the current curve. Um, it's just starting at the end of this period, just start to, to, to increase um, as the inductor becomes saturated. So let's go and have a look in this period here. How do we do that? We move that to the center of the screen. And we start looking inside. Uh, what's happened here? Here we are. We say, well, basically, We have the same off transient, we have the same um, 200 nanoseconds that the transistor switched off for. Um, the on resistance of the transistor obviously increases to infinity, so we can ignore the maths calculation here. As the, uh, um, basically what we're interested in is, first of all, the RDS on continues through this transient. So we see that the, um, let me just zoom out a little bit here, we can explain a bit more what's going on. So we see the, the current now, it's starting to become slightly non-linear, um, now reaching 
um, one, two, three, about three and a half amps in the in the MOSFET. Um, but it's not having any. It's not caused by the RDS on. You can see the VDS and the um, current are showing us that the the RDS on is constant all through this period here. So although the inductor is saturating and becoming non-linear here, the RDS on is remaining constant. Now, what can I see now? If I move now toward the end of the charging period, so here we are stepping up the current again. Now what do I see here? I can already see um, what we are expecting to see is as the charging current increases, as the MOSFET current increases, there will be a slight increase in the RDS on, and of somewhere around 20%. So we'd expect this area here, the RDS on, to go from its 1 ohm to about 1 ohm, 1.2 ohm, so increase in 2 million. Now we can see on the red trays an increase here. Um, uh, basically, if I can zoom in on that, I will do. There we go, look, I can bring that down. So you can see very clearly now, okay. Let me go through this with you now. So on the screen here, I have a, this is the current. The current is increasing, the VDS is increasing, and you can see that the RDS on is increasing now as the current reaches its peak. The current zero is here, so we're on one, two, three, four, five. We've just crossed the five amp line here, from about 5.2 amps. <clears throat> and just as the data sheet says, we see that the RDS on during this period is increasing. And we've now gone from um, let me put the let me put the resistance on a zero line here. So we've gone from 0 0.51, 1 1.1 ohms here, up to about 1. Point, um, about 1.3 ohms here. So about 200 milli ohms increase is in, which is exactly as it says in the data sheet.